All this is Dr. Mobin Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So the reinfection, not infection, but reinfection compared to infection with COVID doubles, almost doubles the risk of at least one symptom staying present six months after the reinfection or up to six months after the reinfection. The risk of hospitalization after reinfection is triple compared to hospitalization after infection. And this is not hospitalization related to COVID, just hospitalization in general. Risk of all cause mortality, any reason for death, in people with reinfection is double compared to people with one infection. That is the study. It is a preprint. It is from the Department of Veterans Affairs um, sponsorship. The doctors work there as well. Plus, the I believe it is uh, Michigan University. We'll see. So it is sobering. However, I want to answer one more question. So if you wanted to just stop watching in, an, in another minute, how about vaccinated? Will this long COVID, and that is, Hospitalization, chances of death or risk of death, and the long COVID, will that be not present if people are vaccinated and then they, they are reinfected? The answer is, at least according to this preprint study, the answer is no. There is no difference. One shot, two shot, or more than two shots had similar outcome after reinfections. So if somebody says that getting the boosters will prevent the long COVID, then they're wrong, at least according to this study. And this is a sobering and uh, uh, not the best news. So I wish it is not this way. Let's look at this data together. So first, let's look at the references. This is drbean.com. In the description of this video, there is a link if you would like to purchase and access one-time fee of $67, which may not be available for long. <laughs> that is one-time fee, access to all the content, about 900 premium content videos other than the ones on the YouTube. So take advantage of that. This is the study. Again, as I said, this is a preprint. Outcomes of SARS-CoV-2 reinfection. This, these are various data points that I'm going to show these to you as we go over this study. This is their PDF, and I have downloaded and gone through this. So let's first look at a couple of things. Number one, let's look at what this study is according to the authors. So authors say that this is world's first study this study has several strengths. To our knowledge, this is the first study to characterize the health risks of reinfection. They say we know the risk to health from infection, but this is the first study ever that looked at reinfections. That is a strength of this study. The second thing they said, we evaluated both acute and post-acute. So they saw that with reinfection, during the acute phase, is there increased risk? And the answer is yes. And does the long COVID and mortality and hospitalization in the long run, that risk is increased as well? The answer is yes. And then the, we evaluated both acute and post-acute outcomes of free infection and examined risks according to vaccination status prior to reinfection. We evaluated the rigor of our approach by testing positive and negative outcome controls to determine whether our approach would produce results consistent with pre-test expectation. So why this is green instead of red is that they did their thorough testing by doing a positive test. That is, they repeated their test to see if the results will be the same. And then they repeated their test on a different kind of disease pattern to see if that pattern produces a similar result, then this result is wrong, and they saw that it did not. So they've done a positive test and a negative test to make sure that what they're saying is correct or what they're observing is accurate. These are the strengths. The weaknesses, and there are more strengths here. The weaknesses, 
there are some that they have shared and there is one important weakness that they have not shared. I think uh, maybe they missed it. So here are the weaknesses. The where is this limitations? So here, the study has several limitations. The cohort of people with one, two, three or more infections included those that had a positive test for SARS-CoV-2 and did not include, include those who may have had an infection with SARS-CoV-2 but were not tested. So they're saying that it may be that there are people on the non-infected side that they thought are not infected because they were not positive and they may have been asymptomatically positive. Similarly, they said if this problem of not including the infected but not positive, if this problem was big enough, then this data set and the, the um, conclusions or statistics will be wrong. Then they say, although the VA, Veterans Affairs Population, is comprised of mostly men. It includes 10% women, which across the groups in our study included 566,020 female participants. Still, that is a weakness of the study. They have about 5.7 million participants. Half a million are women. Good number, but still smaller number. Then they said, we cannot completely rule out confounding Residual confounding. What that means is, let's say that they are calling something because of reinfection. Let's say there is a symptom and they look at that symptom and they say, this is because of the reinfection. Maybe that symptom is actually because of the first infection and that is still continuing and they are just confounding that with the reinfection. And I want to make sure I my audio is working. I'm so sorry that since my last time the audio got disrupted, I keep becoming nervous that hopefully the audio is working. If not, then <laughs> you would just keep hearing this. Okay, so they said we cannot completely rule out residual confounding. Then they said the COVID-19 pandemic is a highly dynamic global event that is still unfolding in real time as various epidemiological drivers of pandemic change over time, including emergence of new variants, increase in vaccine uptake, waning of vaccine immunity, and so on. They're saying that there could be other factors that we cannot rule in or work with. So these are some of the limitations of the study that I wanted to, and strengths of the study that I wanted to put right in the beginning. So huge question that was being asked was, will vaccination change this story? And so I wanted to, let me actually read that for you right here before we go further. Here, the totality of evidence suggests that prevention strategies of reinfection might benefit people regardless of prior history of infection and vaccination status. If you see here as well, Protection from infection also wanes over, wanes over time. Protection from reinfection declined as the time increased since the last immunity conferring event in people who had previously been infected with SARS-CoV-2 regardless of vaccination status. Now, before we go to my drawings, I want to show you one more diagram that would clarify this so that if you wanted to break off from here you could, and let me show you that diagram. One diagram is this one, this diagram. Let me see if I can make it bigger. Uh, my apologies if it breaks. So here, the green bar is one infection, two infection is orange, three infection is blue. In general, what you're seeing is that with re each infection event, the chances, the risk of hospitalization or other sequelae continues to increase. So that is one general trend to observe. Second thing, which is really important for us to understand, this is again their data, this is not me. This is the data showing these risks of hospitalization, of all-cause mortality or other uh, sequelae for other organs. No vaccination, one vaccination, two or more vaccinations. 
So I'm going to try to make it big and see if we can walk through this. Just one, top, all cause mortality. No vaccination. If you see here, this, this is the basic number and then the remaining is the confidence interval. So if I go down here, um, let me make it smaller. So if you see, this is the number. So somewhere about two point something. What they're saying is a reinfection increases the risk of all-cause mortality in unvaccinated compared to the one infection only by 2 point something, 2.5x. Good. Th that is understandable, right? Look at one vaccine and look at two vaccines. Let me draw this line here virtually <laughs> through this mouse. One vaccine is landing somewhere over here. So if somebody has one dose of vaccine, so they had an infection, they had one dose of vaccine after the infection, and now they have a reinfection. Their all-cause mortality rate, or, or I shouldn't say rate, risk, is almost three point something. I wish there were straight lines here that I could actually see. Almost three point something. Now let's go to two or more vaccinations. So two vaccinations or boosters included as well. Look at the top one once, once again, same structure. This is also near, about near 2.75 or so. So the rows below hospitalizations, at least one sequelae, cardiovascular, coagulation, diabetes, fatigue, others. Consider them, other than hospitalization, consider them as long COVID. And now consider one no vaccine, one vaccine, two vaccine. You can see these little plots. For example, let's look at the cardiovascular plot. So once again, the reinfection, this is how we'll read it, reinfection, increases the risk of cardiovascular diseases or sequelae by about two point something, about two, let's call it two here, about by two, doubles it. One vaccine is actually slightly lesser than, no, actually it is here. It is more than two, more than doubles or People who are who have one dose vaccine and are reinfected, their risk of cardiovascular long COVID with cardiovascular symptoms is more than double compared to one infection. Do you know there is something missing in here? One infection with vaccine or without vaccine, that is missing. Now the third column, let's read this as well for cardiovascular. Here we have, I think, slightly lesser than two almost too similar to non-vaccinated. So the risk of cardiovascular sequelae after reinfection in two dose vaccinated or more is also double, which is very similar to unvaccinated. So in my opinion, this chart is very important. One should actually download this picture and then just walk over this with the lines so you can actually read the data or, or ask the authors for the data. So this is an important data point that I wanted to put in front of us. Now, now let's look at the data with my drawings. So if you wanted to break off and just know this much, that what is the risk? Sequelae, at least one symptom lingering on after or till six months after the reinfection, the risk for that is double. Risk for hospitalization is triple and risk of death, all cause mortality is double regardless of vaccine status. Okay, so cohorts. In this cohort, there is something missing. And again, this is a preprint. So maybe they're 
uh, their peers who are going to review this, they would point it out to them. What is the missing part? What they have is in cohorts, number one, they have about 5.3 million or 5.4 million people who were uninfected. They used them as a, as a control, as a cohort. And so they looked at them for this duration and they were not infected and they saw what is the kind of symptoms and diseases or illnesses they had. They compared them to this second group where there were people who were infected once, then infected twice and thrice and four times. And these people may have been not infected or not vaccinated or one dose or two dose or more. However, here is an important point to keep in mind. What is missing in this comparison is people with vaccination only. That, that data is missing. So for example, if I said that there is a person who has just developed some maybe infection and now they have some sequelae. But before this infection, they didn't have the infection, they had the vaccine. Or people who didn't have any infection but had the vaccine and may have the symptoms. Is it possible that over here, when we are saying this person was infected, then they got reinfected and now they have symptoms. Is it possible that somewhere on the way when they got vaccinated that might have caused some symptoms as well? So that comparison cohort is not present. And maybe they didn't think it was important. I think that in general, our researchers, our healthcare authorities have a blind spot towards just the vaccine and the analysis of the side effects on that side. There is a lot of analysis about the benefits of the vaccine, which is excellent, so that should be there. But there is a missing part, which I think it's an intentional blind spot of leaving the vaccine-related symptoms out. I think that this data set would have the opportunity, could have given the opportunity to the researchers to actually compare vaccinated only without infected and compare if they had anything to this group that is missing. Okay, so now let's go through this once again, but fast. This is the reinfection outcomes. June 17 is when this got printed. Washington, so I was calling Michigan, Washington University School of Medicine and Virginia uh, Veterans Affairs, uh, St. Louis uh, Healthcare System. They compared people with one infection and the risk of all-cause mortality and the risk of sequelae for the cardiovascular and pulmonary and other system. The study was the following. They had 257,427 people with one infection, 38,926 people with two or more infections, and then 5.396 million people with no infection. It is a missing cohort here. What is that missing cohort? People with vaccination only. That is missing. So what did they observe? They observed the following. They looked at the hospitalizations, all-cause mortality, not COVID-caused or vaccine-caused mortality, all-cause, excess mortality, excess burden. And in the symptomatology, they looked at pulmonary symptoms, cardiovascular, coagulation, symptomatological, diabetes, fatigue, GIT disorders, kidney disorders, mental health, musculoskeletal, and neurological disorders. So a good array of disorders. So before you start saying that, hey, this study proves something for vaccinated or not for vaccinated, it doesn't really. It, it shows that when the infection continues to occur repeatedly, it puts people at risk. And that risk is present in vaccinated and present in not vaccinated. The missing part here is overall percentages compared to population, 
compared to just vaccinated. So that bigger picture is still missing, but they have done a good job of presenting data within this structure. And the vaccinated were one shot, two shot, or more than two shot. And they were observing them for more about six months or more. So here what they said, some more compared to non-infected control assessments of community. Leave that part. Check this out. The constellation of findings show that reinfection adds non-trivial risk, not a small risk, non-trivial risk of all-cause mortality, hospitalizations, and adverse health outcomes in the acute and post-acute. So when the person is actually sick during that time and then as a long COVID. So they, they keep saying that, hey, there should be strategies of preventing reinfection. And I hope that they agree with this, that vaccine does not seem to be the only strategy. They did say that there should be medical therapies for prevention of reinfection. And I hope that they meant more than vaccine. Details. So they had a cohort with the reinfection, that is meaning more than one infection, 38,000. In that cohort, 12.29% or two had two reinfections. 0 0.76 or 2,263 people had three infections. And then 0 0.08 had more than four infections, four or more. Median time between reinfection, between first to second infection was 79 days. Between second to third infection was 65 days. So 79, about two and a half months, and then about two months or more. We saw these numbers before. The reinfected person, regardless of the vaccination status, had the increase of all-cause mortality, 2.14. The confidence interval from 95%, 1.97 to 2.33. Excess burden, meaning excess mortality that they observed within six months for 1,000 people was 23.8. 1,000 people within six months with reinfection, 23.8. Once again, I'll keep repeating, this is good data that they're providing. There is no data here. There is no group here that is vaccinated only group as a control, just like there is an uninfected only group as a control. Reinfection, risk of hospitalization, has a ratio 2.98, so almost triple. And at least one sequelae, at least some long COVID, six, up till six months, almost double. Now, this may be interesting for some of us. So I'm just going to quickly show this. So Equine Swiss Q says, what about long haulers? So this is whoever had an infection and then reinfection, that is what they are. Um, discussing. So here, look at this pulmonary sequelae. So somebody who got reinfected, how about their respiratory system issues? The risk for that. So 2.49, almost two and a half times more. Cardiovascular issues, 2.3 times more. These color changes are only for me to be able to read various parameters, not intensity of the problem. Coagulation and hematological disorders, 2.2, more than double. Fatigue, 2.4 times. DIT issues, 1.7 times. Kidney disorders, 1.7 times. Mental health disorders, almost double. Diabetes, 1.6 times. Musculoskeletal disorders, 1.2 times, and neurological disorders, 1.3 times or 1.4 times. And then, as I read before, doesn't at least they say this: the totality of evidence suggests that prevention strategies of reinfection might benefit people regardless of prior history of infection and vaccination status. And I read this to you as well. Analysis of pre-specified subgroups based on vaccination status prior to the reinfection. No vaccination, 
one shot or two or more shots showed that reinfection compared to first infection was associated with a higher risk of all cause mortality hospitalization at least one sequela and sequelae in different organ systems do you know there is something very important over here that we are just kind of repeating and that is vaccination one two or more shots and then reinfection that is an interesting thing there, there were people from healthcare who used to say that we will not have a reinfection we will not even have an infection if there is vaccination now there is this drum roll of they will not be long covid if you are vaccinated and have um, and are exposed again at least from this study that doesn't seem to be correct now i also wanted to say that it is not necessary that everybody who gets an infection becomes has this outcome this is the possibility of these the risk is increased uh, not necessarily every reinfection is going to be that way not necessarily every vaccine is going to be that way so this is the discussion thank you very much reema says surely giving shots on top of infection just seems to make it worse here it says is it possible that non infection group was a mixture of both vaccinated and unvaccinated non infection possible yes <laughs> this is why i'm saying that that clarity is not there so although it is world's first large scale study of the study of reinfection and its outcome so that is a tremendous work they are commendable for that but this has raised more questions and to me it has added some more uh, clarity for how uh, the vaccines are doing and this also look how vaccines are doing how they are not helping or helping where they are able to help for example compared to for example for severe and uh, such outcomes the messaging around that was wrong before when they said when you are vaccinated there'll be no infection you will not become the the transmitter of the infection and so on just like that there is there is another uh, narrative that is not developing that hey get the vaccine because you will not develop long covid that is wrong they they if they want people to get the vaccine just say guys get the vaccine that's a totally different message instead of appearing to manipulate people anyways um <clears throat> let's see if there is so with this thank you very much please like subscribe and share there are links in the description of this video my work nowadays has become mostly running with your support and with your you know youtube views uh, because on the business side there are people who are <laughs> still tangling with it so anyways in the video's description there is a link to buy drbean.com access it is a one time fee and you get access to all the the lectures there about 900 plus every week we add new lectures there is link as well to use paypal to support this work there is a link for using buy me a coffee if you don't like paypal um you can become member of substack you can become member of this youtube channel and you can become a patron as well thank you very much and i would see you tomorrow bye bye for now